I'm going to show you how you can make biochar from ordinary bones. Yeah, after the chickens have their way with these bones, I'll fish them out of the compost pile and then ultimately I'll get them over into the retort. I would like to show a little bit more detail about what's involved in the process. I did have a few questions in the last video I did wanting some clarification. So I'll see if I can provide that in this upcoming video. And uh, let's see if we can't make some char. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about each one of these individually and get in a little greater detail. Okay, this is just a regular lid out of a 55 gallon drum. And it's not attached in any way. I cut it pretty precisely so it just slips in. And it's a very secure and tight fit, so I don't worry about trying to secure it uh, beyond that. It really doesn't leak anything as far as any um, gas or smoke out of there. So, very simple on the lid. The drum itself has a series of holes drilled in it. I've got holes at the top, but I've also got holes at the bottom. The holes at the bottom are larger in diameter, and, and I have more of them because I want the air primarily coming in from the bottom, rushing up to the fire that's been lit at the top. So that's where my air is gonna come in. Plus that's also going to be where the, the majority of the exhaust gases being pushed out of the 30 gallon drum are gonna burn and they're gonna need a place to, to escape. Yeah, each one of these builds on something like this is gonna be pretty unique. So there's really no formula to it. It's just something that if you're gonna try something like this, you're gonna to have to experiment and, and find out what works best for you. But I, I think that I've got a pretty good, uh, pretty good understanding of how this barrel um, needs to be configured to have it work how I want it to work. Okay, the 30 gallon drum is going to be loaded with feedstock and it's gonna be placed inside of the 55 gallon drum. The lid will be placed on top. Once this is filled with feedstock, I place something heavy on top of it while it's in the barrel is once the fire's lit, it's gonna be coming from this level, from the top down. It's gonna burn down, burn down, burn down, burn down until it gets down enough to heat up the contents of this. And what's gonna take place there is it's gonna basically go through the process of pyrolysis, meaning that it's gonna burn in the, in the absence of oxygen. So there won't be any real oxygen in here. It's gonna be starved in here from oxygen. So as this heats up to its ignition temperature, it's going to drive off all of the gases. And essentially what you'll be left with is a form of pure carbon. The beauty of carbon in that form is it can no longer decompose. And what they found through studies is it can last thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Now you might ask, well, isn't that gonna become a problem as the stuff inside here heats up? Well. That's why I have simply five holes at the bottom of this. One in the center, and then there's one, two, three, four on the outside of this. And that is more than sufficient to allow that gas to come out. Mind you, there's, there's feedstock that will be stacked all around this and on top of this. So again, as the fire is lit, it's gonna come down this will heat up to the point where it drives off gases. Those gases will escape, and as it gets to a certain level, it will burn again, and then it will burn the remainder, and it will essentially put itself out, and what you're left with is just pure carbon, pure charcoal. And then at that point, you can go ahead and inoculate it however you choose to inoculate it and, and turn it into uh, effectively biochar. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and load this up and, and uh, allow you to see that process and then we'll fire this thing off and see if we can't make some char. And again, there will be feedstock that will be placed in here as well all the way up to the top of the 55 gallon drum. If I stack the wood in there in too much of an organized fashion, I wind up with a much less um, complete burn. But when I use random sized pieces of wood, I tend to get more uh, of a complete burn. Coconut shell and some bones. Let's see what they do. I'm 
go ahead and put a heavy weight on top of that now. And then we go ahead and fill the rest of this up with feedstock. If you don't put enough fuel around the 30 gallon, um, there's a good chance that what you're gonna be left with is, is an incomplete char. So you wanna try to get this space completely filled up so it's kind of like playing a Tetris game um, by random pieces stacking them in there as best you can and I like to leave a little bit of room here in the center just so that the the stack has a bit of room for so it can nest down in there I usually grab some brush or something that I have nearby that's dry that I can use as a kindling. Once I place the lid on, I put a stick, propping it open in this fashion. And once the material on the inside of the inner chamber becomes sufficiently hot, it's gonna to begin to force out all of those gases and then they're going to ignite and reburn in the way that you see it here. Well, it's the next day. Let's take a look, shall we? So you can see how this was yesterday was full and uh, it's been at least reduced in volume by about half because of all of the, the water's been removed, the gas has been removed and any impurity within the wood has been removed so therefore it's been reduced in volume and this is pretty typical of what I've found. Here's some bone. coconut shell more bone Some good looking char. Please subscribe and leave me a comment if you have any suggestions on what you do within your system or if you have any further questions on what I do in mine. See you next week.